Hey, Professor S again. I want to keep talking for another five minutes or so about functional groups. Now, in my first functional group video, I introduced you to the idea of functional groups and presented you with two groups, the hydrophilic hydroxyl group and the hydrophobic methyl group. Here I want to talk about two additional groups that are both hydrophilic, but both of them have something else going on besides simply being hydrophilic. So let's begin with the carboxyl group. Now this group is technically a combination of two other functional groups. One's called a carbonyl group, and I, don't I won't be discussing that in any of my videos, uh, but it combines a carbonyl with a hydroxyl. But when they're combined, what we get is a new group called a carboxyl group seen here. This is a carbon double bound to an oxygen, also bound to an OH. That is not a hydroxyl over there anymore. The entire bond formation is a carboxyl group. And it's important to recognize that in that formation, sure, it's hydrophilic. Two oxygens with carbon and hydrogen, definitely going to be some polar bonding there. But in that specific bond arrangement, that second oxygen can release the hydrogen and donate it to solution as a free proton. In other words, carboxyl groups are hydrophilic and also act as acids. Pretty much all organic acids have carboxyl groups in them. When we look at the way this is written in text, the fact that there's that double bond there complicates things a little bit, and so we typically see it written this way. C-O-O-H. Not C-O-2-H, C-O-O-H. To clearly imply the two oxygens, while they might be connected to the carbon, one of them's connected to the hydrogen and the other one's not. And so we have a carbon double bound to oxygen bound to an OH, COOH. As an example, here's palmitic acid. It's found in palm oil, but it's found in a number, number of other oils and uh, oils as well. It's a fat or a fatty acid. And you can see this molecule has a carboxyl group all the way over at the other end. It's called a fatty acid because it's got that fatty hydrocarbon tail and an acidic carboxyl. In fact, most organic acids actually have the word acid in their name to go with the carboxyl group that makes them acidic. If we have an acidic group, we must also have an alkaline one. So let's erase this and switch to the amino group. The amino group is a nitrogen bound to hydrogens. That NH2 group is definitely hydrophilic because, you know, nitrogen like oxygen tends to form polar bonds with other atoms. But it's actually able to bond to a third hydrogen. It can take a hydrogen ion, a free proton from solution, and incorporate into its structure. And in doing so, it acts as a proton acceptor or a base. So amino groups are hydrophilic and alkaline. This is a pretty easy symbol. It's NH2, just like the name would suggest, or the picture rather would suggest. And here's an example. This is adenine. Adenine is the A in ATP. It is the A in DNA and RNA. Uh, and as you can see up top, there's an amino group right there. There's an NH2. Now, amino groups can be a little tricky sometimes because they can be incorporated into ring structures. And if you look at the bottom of that model or that, that picture, there's that NH hanging off the bottom. That's technically also an amino group. Uh, now, before I leave amino groups, I want to emphasize something because I see students mess this up every year. Amino acids, which I talk about in another video because they're important in protein, so go watch my protein videos if you want to learn about amino acids, most definitely contain an amino group, but amino acid and amino group are two different things. An amino acid is a molecule that does contain an amino, uh, but the amino group is just the NH2 all by itself. Now, before I leave behind these two groups, uh, the fact that they are proton donors carboxyl and proton acceptors amino, uh, means they can ionize. So if we just kind of look at the basic structure of the sample molecules. So here's palmitic acid again. And if it actually does act as a proton donor, that H is going to be released to solution. And when it does so, the O, the oxygen, ionizes. It takes on a negative charge because it keeps the electron and gives up the nucleus of that hydrogen atom. That ionized version is still a carboxyl group. Similarly, if you look at this amino, uh, the amino seen in this adenine again, if it acts as a proton acceptor, it's going to pull a hydrogen ion from solution. And when it does so, it takes on the positive charge of that particle and becomes NH3 plus. 
Has anyone seen the so-called talent? What the hell is this? Gone fishing? He doesn't even own a fishing rod or a boat. This is ridiculous. He doesn't, never uses a script. He expects me to do everything. He's so hard to work with. If you enjoyed that video, here are a few others you might enjoy. Like and subscribe to keep me employed, please.